podcast or why I do what I do just to look at you know so again I stepped into it like okay I can become a better version of myself I'm going to be able to be more creative you know it can help you with these things and then a lot of people I've, I've found come to find that step into it will you know fun for creativity because it's a festival you know that yeah. kind of thing but then they step in a bit deeper than they anticipated and stuff like this starts coming up and in some cases they'd be like oh I had a bad experience it was a bad trip you know although people can have bad trips but when when I've spoken to them about it. i'm like oh shit this is that trauma shit that it like it invokes it in somewhere or another for you to deal with it for you to face it yeah. and i gather that you've got to be that person saying shit i've got some shit i've got to deal with and you deal with it or you can you know you, you can yeah. keep hiding <laughs> it keep hiding it and i think that when you keep doing that and then you keep having experiences i think it just keeps trying to bring it back and then it gets worse and worse and more intense until you either just say i ain't doing it no more or, <laughs> <laughs> or fuck it i'm gonna face what i've got to face and go through what i've got to go through but um how did you feel or how do you feel coming out the other end you know of because i know it's an ongoing process or ongoing journey but from that very first experience to where you are now you know is it something that you would recommend because I, i'm aware what we're talking about isn't you know legal in the context of where you can tell people yeah what you need to do is go and get some lsd or go and get some mushrooms and mm. this that but at the same time we've got a mutual friend so i'm jumping back to come back um a queer Oh yes. Well, yeah, who I interviewed yes. recently, who was at the breaking convention last year, and she shared, you know, a real um, heartful story about herself mm. and her son and the experiences that she's gone through. And ironically, because she made it public, she was on, you know, Instagram talking about it the other week on a, on her platform and her radio show, and I got to interview her following up. And she's moved a long way from where she was at that time. She was allowed me to share with her that she's healed herself, her son using psilocybin mushrooms, and he's no longer doing all the bad. He's not an angry black young black male and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is wicked. But just imagine the fact, in some cases, we've got to wait until it's legalized. We've got to wait until these centers are open and stuff like that. And in that case, I don't know if a queer and her son may have been illegible to go to these centers i don't know if they would have been able to afford to go to these centers and what people have got to do is take or have had to do is just take the responsibility in their own hands and just make you know these groundbreaking <laughs> decisions that can you know sort their shit out basically so with that said like she had to break the law so to speak or done it in a safe place and um but she saved her son you yeah. know and i think that's what's that's that's what's important like it could have been weeks, months down the line that her son may not have been there. He could have been in prison, he could have got caught up, you know. Or, Killed? Yeah, all Stabbed. of that. Yeah, all of that. So, you know, to know that that's what you need to do in some cases, I'm asking you to share with people because there's some people who are in similar positions that we've been in, whether they're that alcoholic or they're just that, I don't know that I've got stuff, but I feel like I'm not happy. I'm in a place and space. Again, as a proactive, you know, person who speaks on something like this what do you get what do you feel about that how you know how does that yeah fit with you or what would mm. you suggest or advise people who are in yeah. position that we've been in a queer from using there as an example but you know we're in these crossroads and places where it's a crossroad and you know yeah. do we wait for it to be mm. legalized we have to wait for the doctors to give us the go ahead it's a complex mm. answer very complex because it depends on your situation it depends mm. on the context so it I'm quite a strong person. I've always been. I've always been independent, looking after myself, you mm. know. And um, I also had therapy before approaching psychedelics, so I understood kind of mechanism of how to help yourself. Mm. And I've already done meditation and yoga. I already prepared myself for the psychedelic experience. Mm. And, and already had it before recreationally, so I wasn't scared of psychedelics. And to people who already tried cannabis and other things, you know, that are kind of like not scared to let go of control. Yeah, I don't think they need to wait. Um, you know, people are, indigenous people are using those things for ages. So like, it's in our culture. In, even in Polish culture, we used to use datura when we, back in the day. So we had some psychedelic stuff in Poland even. But if someone is heavily traumatized and heavily depressed, I would be very careful and not, I wouldn't do it uh, with knowledge I have today. Four years ago, I would tell you, yes, everybody should just do it. But now I'm like, no, we have to be very careful because what can happen, there's two things that can happen. It can either re-traumatize you 
because the trip might be so hard you can't contain it yourself and it might make you feel even worse and i've seen this happening with people mm -hmm. and the second thing that often happens is spiritual bypassing is people go go manic people get egomania after the experience and they think they're gods and they think uh, you know all those things about themselves and they feel great obviously because mania makes you feel good but then what happens often after mania you get the depressive episode and you see that with people who did a lot of 5 million DMT and fought their gods and now they have problems sleeping and they have anxiety. So I think it's, we just have to be very careful with how we approach this. So to people who have never tried drugs or never tried anything psychedelic uh, and are heavy depressed, I would, pref I would, I think they should go to a retreat and they should have facilitators and sitters. Definitely at least one sitter. So have a one-to-one -one experience or go to retreats. People like, I mean, retreats like Synthesis, for example, they have a um, bursary scheme starting. So they will be offering really cheap prices to people for unprivileged backgrounds so they can have those experiences. So I think it's very important for us to kind of like facilitate that more. I would love to one day, I was talking to Camille Barton, you mm -hmm. know her as well, big up Camille, that would be great to start a fund for people from unprivileged backgrounds to be able to go to retreats and also to get psychedelic integration afterward. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I'm very passionate about and not doing it yet, but this is kind of next goal to set up this fund for the people who cannot afford it so they have a sitter mm -hmm. and support through it. Because it's really sometimes, you know, all kinds of stuff can come out. Wicked, thank you for sharing. But then what you've just sparked me to think of, because this is going back again. So the Torah, Poland, wrote, yeah, what you can you share anything with the I know we're jumping, but any history or you know, culture? I don't know much, psychedelic, psychedelic, unfortunately. You know I, mean? okay. I don't know much at all, but I know there is a there is a use of the Torah okay, uh, okay. in in back in the days. But obviously Christianity wiped everything out, so you know, we were really pa so. Polish people were shamanic people, let's use this word. We had this culture of being in the forest, collecting herbs, you know, uh, having rituals, very strong. But then Christianity said, well, if you keep doing it, we're gonna just invade you and burn everything and rape your people. So we became Christian, basically, mm -hmm. you know. That was a global... And that started wiping out all the traditions. So we we know so little about Polish mythology. About but we were very little. There's very little uh, evidence, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. So um, where am I going now? So you mentioned because we spoke about this yesterday, and I would like to then think out. You know what is it? Because we spoke. I was with Danny um, Nemo yesterday. Remember Danny? Nemo? We got Danny. <laughs> yeah, we got Danny. <laughs> And we were talking, you know, gods in the Bible, I mean, drugs in the Bible and all that type of stuff we were going over. And then we, he also spoke about, spoke on the, you know, the main, the Messiah complex that some people come up with after psychedelics. Big problem. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then we spoke, I said, you know, because I gathered that many people have that experience. They have an experience where they become God, become one with God, sit with God, they with the, all that type of experience. And um, and some people, I guess, take it on where you know they feel that they are the god, they're the god, they're they're god, and you know I control everything, and, you know, and I can get that after you have such an intense experience where <laughs> you are it, because you know whether you know I've been a dog before, you know I've been other things, and I was a dog, so I can imagine, and if you became god, that you became god, like I, I totally get it, but then when you come back down and you're in, you know, your body and you're in, you know, your earthly role. And then you speak to other people and they're like, yeah, I was God. And they're like, oh, he was God. Everyone's yeah, a God. <laughs> yeah, like, like, we're all gods. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I come from a school of thought where that's what I was taught, that yeah. we're all gods, you know. We're, you know, we're all gods having a human experience and, you know, this, that and the other. So just to come back, what do you think that is about? You, see, you mentioned 5 me old DMT, people taking it and coming back, thinking they're the God. What? And then that actually causing problems, you know, so to speak, you know, in their mind and, you know, I guess with their relationships they may have with other people. Do you have any insight? Yeah, into definitely. That? I think it's like, it's all about grasping. You know, I come from the same school of thought because I was always interested in Sufism a lot. And Sufis say we need to drop the consciousness of having a God and mm -hmm. walk into consciousness of being gods, of being mm -hmm. God. And I really vibe with this. I understand that. And I'll tell you why. It's not about, 
So yeah, we all had those. Ex I had this experience too. I was lonely, God, many times. I did everything. I asked myself, why do you create wars and everything? And the message was to find out if there's anybody else there to react to my craziness, you know. So I had those trips too. And and I feel I feel like what it gave to me is confidence that I am responsible for my own life and that I can create my life. So if I make certain decisions, they will lead me to something else. If I want to have a beautiful house in a countryside, I need to make it happen. I can't wait for things to come to me. That's how I got this understood this message. I think what we have to do and be careful of, it's not to grasp to the idea that you are that God, and because that then leads to egomania, messiah complex, and we see this across the whole movement. But it's not necessarily a bad thing to feel like you're God, because it gives you this responsibility. You have the power and strength in you to do whatever you want in life, and that's the truth, I think. It is, it is. Because I was actually taught, you know, as a teenager learning about this stuff, you know, I was like, well, what is a God? And he was like, you know, as a, you can't call yourself a God because the God the creator is like, no, a God is just somebody who takes responsibility for their life. That's what I was taught. Like, okay, if that's a God, yeah. then I'm a God then. Like, I'm going to take exactly. responsibility for my life. And, you know, and like, even by definition, you know, there's loads of wordplay and religions done a lot in, you know, that term, you know, in, in the terms. But it literally is that, you know, be the creator of your life, you know, create, manipulate your reality, you know. You know, and that's what it's about. But I gather that again on the circuit in the community, so because there wasn't, I pretty much heard it in like the African conscious community a lot, and I didn't hear it up until I got into the psychedelic community. <laughs> so I was like, oh, everyone's God's here too. You know, well, you know that ties in with you know with their godship. And then we spoke on the fact that you know some people you know maybe go on a retreat or two, they come back and then they open up centers, and you know, and that's led to a lot of. Um, challenges you know mm. you know and, and stuff you know because you know you can't just go on a i don't know a three week or for even a three month program or you know ayahuasca retreat or mushroom thing and then come back and then you know wearing the appropriate clothing and stuff like that and that's something that i have my frustrations with but i also understand and get so um what keeps you grounded how do you keep yourself grounded away from why didn't you hey <laughs> i'm the god and i know why we will have wars and this that what kept you kept, kept you grounded basically marta <laughs> <laughs> big, up marta. big up marta marta is a cognitive scientist and she has been researching psychedelics how they work on your mind and 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 on your ego and or all of this for years now and because we're best friends we're in constant contact with each other uh, and she was kind of observing those things happening on her but because she was just like tiny bit in front of me in her process i always had her information so i was very careful not to fall for it for this and as soon as i was falling for the egomania or anything like that Marta's words, Marta's words. It was always like, she's been there already, don't fall for this, this is all fake, don't go there. Your real, um, my real goal is to help people, so keep helping people, don't, it's not about you, it's about what you do for people. And you know, as you said, those retreats, this is my, well, biggest problem actually, in the psychedelics community, that people take LSD once or twice, or mushrooms, and then they become mushroom gods and then they think they're great sitters and they organize those retreats and give people who have no experience of psychedelics heroic doses for the first time without proper preparation, integration and stuff. This is creating so much trauma and problems right now. Um, we have stories of people giving five me, me out to people and tasing them or pouring water down their face, all this kind of stuff very scary to me i had a moment i had a moment once when i tripped and i had this like oh i'm gonna become a shaman you know i'm gonna be like but i think quickly no 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 this is your ego talking don't go there this is not what you're supposed to do there are other people that have calling for that much better at it than you <laughs> basically getting where you fit in or who, yeah. do your job exactly yeah. find out what your job and support people who are doing it right you know you can support the healers or researchers and help them with raising awareness, basically.